Section C of chapter 16, we're going to look at lines in parametric and vector form and some relationships that they might have. And we have three types of coplanar lines. So pl lines that are in the same plane. We could have intersecting lines. Or we could have parallel lines. Or we could have coincident lines, meaning same line. But it is possible to have two lines that don't lie in the same plane where they're not parallel or intersecting. Those are called skew lines. They are non-coplanar, not lying in the same plane, and because of that, they can't intersect. We could translate one to the other, sort of a bird's eye view of the two lines, and we could find an angle between them, but they don't physically intersect. So here we have two lines, L1 and L2. We want to show that these two lines are parallel. First thing, let's put them into vector notation. So pause the video and fill in these blanks. What you should get is the first line has a point negative 1, 1, 1, and then a direction vector of 2, negative 2, 4. Line 2 has a point 1, 0, 3, and a direction vector of negative 1, 1, negative 2. And if they're going to be parallel, they have to be pointing the same direction. And if we look at this, D1, we call this D1, and this one D2, what can we say about D1 and D2? Are they going the same direction? And the answer would be yes, they are, because one is the, a multiple of the other. So one direction vector is pointing sort of the opposite direction. Notice the signs are all different, and it's twice as big as the other. But nonetheless, they are pointing the same way. One would give us a line that builds this way, multiplying by s. The other one starts going this way, but negative values of s would just fill in the other side. So these two lines are parallel. They wouldn't have a point of intersection. And we know that they're not coincident because this point is different for both of them. In that next example, we're going to show that L2 and L3 intersect. I'm going to find the angle in between them. And then we're going to show that line 1 and line 3 are skew lines. So to show that line 1 and line 2 are going to intersect, what that means is that they have a point in common. So what I want to find is I want to find a value for S and for U here, for T and for U, that would give us the same X's, the same Y's, and the same Z's. So I'm going to equate those. I can say that 1 minus t is equal to 1 plus 2u. That's my x's. I can take my y's and equate those. t equals negative 1 minus u. And my z's, equating those, I have 3 minus 2t equals 4 plus 3u. And I can just grab two of these and solve the system. We get t equals negative 2u. And we can make a substitution here. And we find that u is equal to 1. And substituting back in, t 
is equal to negative 2. Now before we say that these are my values for u and t, we got to make sure they work with z also. And we can plug in u and t. We get 3 minus 2 times negative 2 equals 4 times 3, 4 plus 3 times 1. seven equals seven, so we do get a common value for z. So these two lines will intersect when u is one and t is negative two, and I could plug those in to find out what x, y, and z are. So now I need to find the angle in between them. And what I need to look at is the direction vectors. d2, the direction of line two, is given by negative 1, 1, negative 2. D3, the direction vector for line 3, is given by 2, negative 1, 3. Go ahead and find the angle between these. To do that, we're going to take the cosine, inverse cosine, of the absolute value of their dot product, which would be 9, divided by their magnitudes multiplied together. The magnitude of d2 is the square root of 6. The magnitude of d3 is the square root of 14. And taking the inverse cosine of all of this, gives me approximately 10.89 degrees. We can extend this idea to the second question that we're asked, show that line 2 and line 3 are skew. What I hope you can envision is that in taking these and equating their x's, their y's, and their z's, there isn't going to be a value of s and u that solve all three of these equally. So I'm going to take and equate the x's, y's, and z's again. Here's my y's equation. So if these two lines, L1 and L3, intersected, there would be a value of S and U that made all three of these equations true. So let's take two of them again and solve the system. And in solving this system, what we should find is that U equals 0 and S equals 1. And that is for solving the first two equations simultaneously. But upon plugging them in here to the third equation, what we get is that 5 does not equal 7. Plug in u equals 0 and s equals 1. Sorry, 5 does not equal 4. And because we can identify that the direction vectors aren't multiples of each other, and there is no intersection point, they're not parallel, and because they're not parallel and they don't intersect, they must be two skew lines. The last example we're going to look at today is we want to find the shortest distance from the given point to this line. What we can do here is we can set all three of these equal to some parameter, say lambda. We're going to change our 
equation for the line into parametric form. I'm going to say, okay, if x minus 1 divided by 2 equals lambda, then x has to be negative 1 plus 2 lambda. If y plus 4 divided by 3 equals lambda, then y can be found by taking negative 4 plus 3 lambda. And similarly, z can be given by the parametric equation 3 plus 1 lambda. So for this point A, any point A on the line can be found by this. If I know lambda, I can find point A. So question would be, what could I write down for vector PA? Here's point P. Here are the coordinates for point A. Remember, to find this vector, we do A minus point P. So the vector form for PA is going to be 2 plus 2 lambda, negative 6 plus 3 lambda, lambda. And if this distance between P and A is going to be minimized, that means we're talking about a right angle here. And if we have a right angle, then PA dotted with the direction vector from our line has to be zero. Shortest distance, right angle, dot product equal to zero, all saying the same thing. Our direction vector, we can pull off these parametric equations, two, three, one. So if we dot that with PA, what we get is that four plus four lambda minus 18 plus 9 lambda plus lambda has to equal 0. And solving this, we get lambda equals 1. Well, that's fine that we have lambda now, but in order to find the distance from P to A, we need to know what A is essentially, or we can plug that value in to find a vector notation from P to A. Plugging in 1, we get 4, negative 3, 1, using the distance formula, finding the magnitude of P A, we get that this is equal to the square root of 26. Square root of 4 squared plus negative 3 squared plus 1 squared.